Hey guys, uh, welcome to part four of my deep dive into joint series. I want to cover anti joints in this session. So we have same tables as before, just made slight change in values. Uh, table one is a list of circuits with a length and uh, active flag. Table 2 is also uh, another list of circuits uh, with a voltage field and is active flag. Um, so the circuits, are, the circuit IDs are for the most part the same between the tables, but the last record in each table is different. It's unique to, to the table. And if you notice one change I made from previous sessions is that now each record, uh, uh, we have one record in each table that doesn't have any values except for the ID, circuit ID, the nulls. Okay, anti-joins. So, um, if somebody asks the question, uh, I want to see all uh, circuits from table one, only those tables from circuit, uh, sorry, only those circuits from table one that are missing from table two. Okay, so basically table one minus what's in table two. Uh, we would use uh, anti join, and the, that's where the name kind of comes from because we're sort of not. Uh, at least logically, we're not looking for the match between IDs, but we're looking for where there is no match. And in this case, we uh, only table one if, is of interest. If there is something in table two that's ma not matching with table one, we're not interested in that. Okay, so it uh, somebody created uh, Venn diagrams for that. I have my diagrams, but I didn't go as far as creating um, anti-joint diagrams. So I'm going to use um, their diagram for illustration. So here's the left excluding join. So uh, I usually see this being called as uh, anti-join. It's actually the first time I see it's being called excluding join, but I like this terminology. It's even more intuitive. Uh, what we're doing here is, so it's the same thing as anti-join, just different name, but uh, we are taking what's uh, in table A, uh, he has table A, table B, I have table 1, table 2. Uh, so we're taking uh, what's in table A and then we're excluding from that all uh, everything that's in, in table B. So, uh, and of course, this uh, moon uh, illustrates this. Um, the right excluding join would be uh, uh, the mirror image of it. So we are only displaying what's in table B, except what's in table A or minus what's in table A. And believe it or not, we have outer excluding join where we are looking for everything except the intersect. So both the tables, the records in table A that are not matching with table B and the other way, the unique records in, in, in both tables. So how do we get this output? Even though we call it uh, anti-join or excluding join, uh, there is no really a uh, new syntax to that. It's not like I'm going to type anti-join here, left anti-join or something. No, it's just a left join, but it's a combination of left join with the where clause um, applied to the right side, to the right table uh, that gives us this um, result. So let me just run it first. Again, we are looking only what's in table A minus the circuits in table in, in table two. 
Um, and if you remember to show this tables again, this is what we're looking for, right? Only the unique circuit in table A, and that's what it displays. Because we're selecting everything, so everything from table one and from table two, it also shows the records from table two. And I do want to display them. If, uh, um, for the sake of explanation, if I was just looking uh, to, uh, if not for the explanation, I, I guess, you know, I would just limit it to table one because we're only interested in that. But um, so uh, I guess uh, uh, I'm gonna do all three and then go a little deeper to explain it. Now the f the other side of it, uh, if we want to do the uh, right anti join, uh, I certainly <laughs> would not do the, the actual right, right join, I would just uh, um, swap the tables for my left join. It's uh, The pattern is, is kind of complicated enough that I don't think you want to add a right join here. So it's the left join, but we, we're just swapping. We are starting with table two, left join on table one, we have our, our own condition, and now we are applying where clause on the left side. Right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We, we're still we're applying it on the right side, but but on the right side we have table one now. We we we're, we're still applying it on the on on the right side. And the full exclusive join. Uh, we would use uh, we would do full outer join, and we would apply two conditions uh, applied previously. Basically, we we are combining this condition with that condition with or. Okay, so how does it work? It's it's not a very natural natural pattern, I would say. So let me change this back to everything. Okay. Give me everything from table one that's not in table two. It gives me this. Okay, so what we know uh, about the order of query execution that first it uh, uh, from clause is executed, which includes all the join, all the on condition. This is executed first. Then where clause is executed, and then the select. So let me look at the intermediary step uh, of, you know, how break it up into two steps. And this is actually how the query does it. So I'm doing this first. Um, I said that select will be executed last, but in order to show you the results, I have to use the select. Um, but um, it, it doesn't change anything. So, okay, we did left join on uh, table one. So all circuits from table one are here. The matches this is the circuit from, from table two, right? So um, we have a match here, match here, and no match here, but that's fine, it's left join. Okay, and then we come to the second step where the query is basically going to apply the filter to this uh, data set. And the filter is gonna look at T2 circuit, uh, circuit from, from table two, which is this one. Um, and uh, find the null here and return just that. So just to back up, uh, when we did the left join, uh, the, ro the row from uh, table B, uh, there was no matching row from table B. 
for circuit YYY. So the database had to fill in this field with something and it always fills, fills them up with null from missing record. Okay, so we can we are using this null in the circuit, this non-existing null. It's not like there is a value anywhere for circuit. We don't have a circuit with a null value. It's just a, uh, not like a placeholder, placeholder, like something to put in the cell. It's synthetic null, I would say. Um, it's using this null. Uh, because we are certain that that means that that record is missing. This null in, in the circuit column tells me that there is no match for what's, there is no match in table B for this record in table A. What if I did it on, on voltage, right? Now, this works if I apply it to a circuit. But what if I did it on the voltage? Because voltage is also now here. You can see that it's going to return two records, right? And only one record is what we want. This record... Um, this record uh, with circuit ID 101 is not unique to table A. We have it in table B, table B as well. We have a match. It's just the voltage happens to be missing uh, in that table. So uh, we have a uh, rule basically for using this anti-join pattern. If you want uh, uh, certainty, which you do want, <laughs> Um, if you want to have certainty that uh, your anti-join will return uh, only uh, the record that only unique record, right? On the other side, you have to use the uh, the field that you know cannot it cannot contain null. Something like a circuit, it most likely would be. Um, you know, I would check that it's probably a primary key. Primary key cannot have a null. Database will not let you put it in. So it's a guarantee for me that if in this pattern, in this intermediate step, if I find a null there, it means there, there is no match. It doesn't mean that, oh, we just have uh, some record where a uh, circuit was left as null. And it doesn't have to be a primary key. Um, it, again, it's it, it. We just have to have a guarantee that there is a uh, that there cannot be an actual null value in that field. So if your field is defined as not null, and of course if you know that uh, you know sometimes you have a situation where uh, you know the database been the you know for a while all kind it contains all kinds of abnormalities and and nulls. And then, you know, new developer comes in and he says, oh, you know, this field should not have null. So let me update the table definition. Okay, it's not going to have nulls anymore. And maybe the database is going to say, you know, it depends on the situation. The database is going to say, oh, but, you know, as, as he is trying to run this query, do, do you, um, you do have values with the violation. Do you want to let them go or not? Uh, it really depends on the database you're working with and situation. And he may say, yeah, okay, whatever, just um, existing values, values get grandfathers, so to speak. So in this situation, uh, your table definition would be misleading, I would say. So you may also just check, you know, just query if there are nulls. Uh, in that field, but in case of primary key, it's it's unlikely because it, uh, primary keys tend not to have nulls. It it sounds like it would be a serious issue in with uh, referential integrity for whatever reason your primary key uh, had nulls. So I think that uh, covers it. Um,